Hi, I'm Jay Tyler. This is the second part of our three-part series on silver soldering. In this video, we're going to talk about the preparation requirements for a good solder joint. Let's start with how you prepare the solder for soldering. I like to take a piece of sandpaper and scrape it over the solder. And what this does is it removes the surface silver oxide. Now silver will start to pick up oxygen models, uh, molecules in the atmosphere and uh, react with the surface silver to cause the compound called silver oxide. And that is an anti-flux. It, it doesn't uh, do well with soldering. Soldering doesn't like oxides. Solder will adhere well to the metals in the parent metal, but it will not adhere to their oxides. That's the reason it's important to keep everything from oxidizing, including the silver. If you have silver oxide on the silver, it's just not going to want to flow well. So I, I wipe it all off with this, and then I like to take a paper towel and some regular old rubbing alcohol and go along the solder with it and wipe off those silver oxide molecules. You can see there, it's black. Silver oxide is black. Okay, now I've got my solder clean. I'm going to set that aside so that it doesn't lay down on anything and get contaminated. All right, now the flux. You use clean flux and a clean container and a clean brush. Okay, you do not contaminate the reagent container. That's what this is. It has the flux from the manufacturer or however you buy it, your supplier or whatever. Now you can take it out, you can use it, clean the brush, go back in, take out some more, clean the brush, go back in. But if you have excess on the brush, um, boy, my chemistry professors used to beat us in the head for contaminating the reagent bottle. We would have something left over and we'd dump it back in and oh no, 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 that was, that was not the thing to do. So they said in college chemistry you cannot contaminate the reagent bottle. So let's take that to our practical application in soldering. We can take it out. But if you have excess, don't wipe it off because you can take contaminants from out here and put them in here. And contaminants have uh, impur their impurities and they can combust and vaporize because they have lower temperatures usually and it can cause bubbles. That's one of the causes of bubbles. Now that's a refrain you're probably going to hear throughout this video. Do not contaminate the reagent bottle. All right. Now the wires. How do we prepare the wires? Okay, the wires, you'll notice they're roughened up. They don't have a smooth, shiny surface. They're kind of rough. Let's get in there even closer. And the band material is roughened up. It's not shiny. Now, the reason we do that is that metals, all metals have a property called malleability. They're malleable. That means they can be polished, they can be burnished, they can be rubbed, and you're actually scraping some of that metal over the surface porosity. That's what makes it shiny. It uh, covers up the porosity so you have more reflective value and makes it real shiny. Well, that's great for aesthetics, but for soldering it's terrible. It greatly reduces the mechanical adhesion. So if you roughen up these wires, what you're doing is you're removing that burnished surface and you're exposing the subsurface porosity, making a really good surface for that mechanical adhesion we talked about in the first video. And the way I do that is I use like a little mounted stone like this on a handpiece and I'll just run it over the wires and in the bands and get them nice and roughened up. And uh, you notice that they're tapered, the loose wires or the wires, the free ends, are tapered, like this one. Even the big wires that come up here, they're tapered on the end. And the reason I do that is so that I can completely encase the ends of the wires and all of the wire into the final solder joint. Now I can do that with